Blog Talk Radio. I did want to share this with uh, the listening audience just to uh, show us where we are. You know, I think truth is important. Being in touch with uh, reality is very important. So get accurate, real-time information about black people. Uh, I believe I said back when I was sharing the information about no longer working with uh, Warm the Horizon that... uh, Records were set um, for some of those programs for live listeners and callers and all of that, just to give you a, a comparison and Sarah Sudan SETI, okay, just so it's, it's in the ballpark. Um, when Sarah Sudan SETI was on the program back in uh, October, he generated about 1,200 listens in less than a week. Less than a week, you know. Um, Some of those programs where we were talking about the split with War on the Horizon, same thing. (laughs) Less than a week. Huge numbers. Black male gets lynched in Mississippi, Frederick Jermaine Carter, and uh, not half. Not half. Now, it could be me, you know, could be Gus is, is, you know, foolish and doesn't have anything constructive to say. That could be the case, but I just think that says a lot. In 2010, almost 2011, system of racism, white supremacy, that you have way more black people tuning in to hear Sarah Sudan Seti as opposed to getting information uh, from a state senator. Uh, And we had a member of the House of Representatives the same day um, talking about the uh, death of a 26-year-old black male who, uh, I don't know, it looks 
probable that he might have been lynched 2010. I mean, I don't know, but I just I think that is that is uh, significant. Hopefully, uh, you know, and it's not an indictment. Anybody who is a fan or supporter of uh, Sarah Sudan Seti, you know, no, no beef between myself and him. Just I think that's very interesting. Very, very interesting. And, uh, you know, you could sub his name out for, you know, a lot of folks, uh, a lot of folks <laughs> at any rate. Uh, hopefully, people will get an opportunity. If you did not catch those programs, go back, hit the archives. Uh, we had uh, Mississippi State Senator David Lee Jordan uh, on the program uh, December 22nd. Uh, State Senator, black male. Uh, he had a lot of great information. And then, same day, uh, we were able to follow up and get uh, House of Mississippi State House of Representatives member. Uh, Mr. Willie Perkins Sr. Uh, he was on the program same day, uh, and he had a lot of information. He's also the president of the local branch of the NAACP uh, down there in Mississippi, but both black males, older gentlemen, and they uh, shared a lot of great information, even had a cowbell with reference to uh, this whole incident. So check out those archives. I'm going to try and uh, keep an eye on this story and see if we can get some more people to come in and, and share information. Real important what's going on down there in Mississippi. Finally, we will be back tomorrow, uh, December 25th, two times. Uh, we'll be back. The first program will be 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Pacific. Jeremiah Kamara. Uh, he authored Holy Lockdown. He's written several books talking about uh, how so-called Christianity has retarded the development of black people. Should be very interesting. Uh, he said he's focusing a lot on his slave sermons. So you can go to his uh, YouTube channel and view a lot of the videos that he has. I think he has like 16 different segments, slave sermons. They're They're relatively short, maybe I don't know, three, four minutes apiece. You can watch those to prep for tomorrow's program. But really excited about having him on. A lot of you all have been requesting Mr. Kamara. So 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, you all can get the family in and gather around the tree and listen. And then immediately following that broadcast uh, at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, we will have the roundtable on Zeitgeist. Uh, one and two. Apparently, there's a part three coming out at the beginning of 2011. So we will have a roundtable. Uh, if you have seen the films or want to watch them before tomorrow, call in. Uh, as soon as you call in, I'm going to open the phone lines up from the very beginning. So if you call in at the beginning of the show, uh, we'll be on and we'll just be discussing both of those films. And uh, I guess it would be cool if you if people saw those films before they became informed about racism and white supremacy, how they responded to it then, and if you've you know watched it or if you saw it for the first time after you were informed about racism and white supremacy, I'd be real interested in uh, kind of getting a nice contrast on that. Um, but yeah, that's tomorrow. Tune in December twenty fifth. We are rolling hard. Two shows countering racism, uh, and with that. Um, I guess the only other thing I was I'd said before, uh, I was looking forward to doing a fundraiser in January. Um, the white people at Blog Talk Radio are going to be charging a fee for all shows unless you just want 30 minutes. So enable to continue doing the program with two hours per segment. Um, you have to pay the white people at Blog Talk Radio twenty nine ninety nine per month. Um, it's actually. For a year, it would be like two hundred and ninety dollars something they're doing a special right now to try to get people to sign up so they can get as much money as possible um It's pretty low seeing that we were able to fundraise and get the macbook pro i don't know I think uh that's a reasonable request to see if we can get the funding for one year that would be a little less than three hundred bucks We'd pay for a whole year phone lines promotion. All that jazz. So you can invest if you think it would be constructive. Let's see if we can knock that out before before the new year. That's a pretty small sum, I think. We should be able to get that easily. So if you think it would be constructive to invest in keeping the show on for uh, at least another year, less than 300 bucks, we'll get it done. Thank you. 
Uh, this program, we are doing uh, non-white children, non-white children, giving them a platform to uh, express their views on racism, white supremacy. I plan on uh, sitting back and uh, listening. I think it'll be a very informative broadcast, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. There are a lot of people that called in, so this is the way I guess I'll do it. Um, if you are on the line or if that directly if the non-white child is on the line, if you could press one, that way I'll know which lines I'm opening up and which ones are just people listening. If you just called in, you're an adult or not an adult, excuse me. If you are an older non-white person and you just called in to listen, no worries. I'll, I'll get questions later on. But right now, if uh, it is a non-white child on the line prepared to uh, share their views, if you could press one on uh, your line, that would be great, and then I'll know which lines to open up. While wow, people are pressing one, uh, Justice, you are with us, yes? Yes. Groovy, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. She's doing great. She's doing great. Did you have any uh, any announcements, anything you wanted to share before we get started? Um, just wanted to say that uh, thank you for uh, everybody being on the call, and uh, just have fun. Have fun. That's what I sent out in the questions I said yesterday. That was the last sentence I put in the letter. Have fun. Have fun. Uh, okay. Person who dialed and, in last. Um, oh, sorry. And replace white supremacy with justice. Why uh, you are doing? Why you are on the call? Right on. Right on. Uh, let's see. Person who dialed in five four zero four. You have a hand up, so I assume we have a young person waiting. Uh, five four zero four. Are you there? Yeah, we're me and me and my daughter's here. Outstanding. Uh, Outstanding. Uh, hello, daughter. I don't know how you would like to be referenced. Um, how would you like to be referenced for the program, young lady? Uh, how, well, tell me your name. My name is Jewel. Jewel. Her name is, Be- her name is Jewel. Jewel. Outstanding. Gorgeous name. Gorgeous name. Uh, okay, so we have Jewel. We'll have Justice. Uh, let me check. 3542, last four digits. Three five four two. Uh, is there a young person waiting for us? Yes, this is Darian. This is Darian. Outstanding, outstanding. Uh, do you all want to share Khalil's your son. ages? I'm sorry. Twelve years old. I'm Khalil B. Son. Oh, right on, right on. Very professional, right to the point. I love it. Uh, okay, so we have Darian. I said your name correctly. Is that right, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Darian and Jewel. Did I pronounce your name correct? Yes. All right. All right. Outstanding. Do um, you want to tell folks uh, how old you are, Jewel? I'm seven years old. Seven years old. Wow. Wow. Going to be lots of fun. Lots of fun. Um, let me make, if anybody else, uh, if there are any other children on the line, press one so I'll know and I can I can get to your line. Um I'll keep an eye out as we as we get started. Um I will go uh ladies first if that's okay. Um Jewel, um is yes. there anything you wanted to share with listeners before we get started? Anything you want to ask or anything you want to say before we uh get rolling? No no. Okay. Let's see. Uh Let's see. Uh, Darren, am I saying your name correctly? Darren? Yes. Darian? Darian. 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 My fault. Uh, Mr. Darian, did you uh, have anything you wanted to share with folks listening in before we get started, or did you have any questions you wanted to ask? No, sir. Okay. All righty. Uh, I will defer to Joe. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I guess the other young listener, uh, your line should be open uh, if you want to uh, chime in and share anything with the listeners, your line should be open. Do you want to say anything now or you want to wait a little bit? 
Day. My name Day. What uh, What is your name? Or what name? How do you want us to? Uh, what would you like to be called? Jay. Jay. Did you say Jay? Yes. Oh, okay. Beautiful. If you could speak up a little bit or get, I guess, a little closer to the microphone, it would make it easier for us to hear you. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. All righty. Um, I will go to uh, Justice. Um, do you have any questions that you would like to uh, ask to get things started? Sure. Um, um, my questions can be for everybody on the call. So, uh, well, anyways, the the um, the children. My first question is, what do you think of, about racism? I'm sorry, what do you think racism means? White people don't like black people. Anybody else? I think that racism is the oppression of one race by another. Is that it or... I think racism means white supremacy. That's a good answer. Anybody else? And on my opinion, I don't think that black people can be racist. They can be prejudiced, but they can't be racist. What do you think uh, prejudice means? Like we can judge people and judge them by their looks and their size. Yeah, um, so-called black people could not be racist, uh... Is that all? Anybody else? Okay, um, Gus, do you want us to just, um, let me ask one question and then you and then me and then go back and forth, or how do you want to do it? Uh, it's, you can make a decision if you, uh, however you would like to do it. If you would like to ask, you ask one question, then I ask one, we can do that. Or if you'd like to ask, you know, several questions, and then I can ask a few. Or, um, if anybody else, any of the, uh, our guests, if they have anything they want to say, or if they have questions, we can stop and give them a chance to do so as well. Um, we can probably just go back and forth, so, uh, you go ahead and, uh, Go ask your question. Okay. Okay. Um, do any of... I'll save that one. I'll save that one. Um, what do you all think about Christmas? I like it because you spend time with your family. I think that it's it's a time for people that that it's a time for people to spend their money and that's the time that most people go in debt and there are more robberies but I kind of like around Christmas time because we get out of school and also we get to spend more time with our family and have fun. Did uh, anyone else have any thoughts on Christmas? Um, uh, 
Never mind. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> um, I guess I'd rather have a, a more open format because I have I, I have a couple follow up questions I'd like to ask around this. So um, maybe we'll have an open format. If you have multiple questions you'd like to ask, we can do that. If you just want to ask one, um, that's fine. Is that is that acceptable, Justice? Uh, yeah. Thank you kindly. Um, okay. Um, that's interesting. That's interesting responses around Christmas. Um, does anyone here think that Christmas, that Christmas is related to racism? Does anyone here think that Christmas is racist in any way? It could be because um, mo- everything, almost everything, is related to racism, racist, white supremacy. So it may be. Hmm. Hmm. Have any of you all? Uh, have any of you all sat on Santa Claus? Sat on his lap and uh, told him, you know, what toys or uh, presents you want for Christmas? Have any of you all done that? Yes, when I, I was a younger child. I have too. Yeah. No. Oh, we got one no. Okay. Hmm. I have, just for the record, I, I have done so uh, yeah. many times. I think... Uh, I think my parents probably have photographs of uh, the in- incident. Um, that's interesting. I have. Oh, Justice has too. See, they get you. They well, get you. Well, many times actually. <laughs> Me too. Me too. When I, when I was confused. Me too. Uh, was it ever a black person when you sat in Santa Claus's lap? Was it ever a black person or a non-white person? My my Santa Claus was a black Santa Claus. Oh wow! Okay. Wow. Hmm. I have never seen a black Santa Claus before. <laughs> That's pretty surprising. <laughs> Anyone else that that has sat with Santa Claus? Did you sit with a non-white person or a black, a non-white mine Santa? Mine was or a, a white Santa Claus. Hmm. Same with mine. <laughs> hmm. Do uh, do any of you all think that it could be racism, white supremacy, why so many of us have sat in the lap of a white person as Santa Claus? Did uh, did you all hear that question? May you repeat it? Uh, what was the question again? The the question was, do you think it could be racism? Uh, that is, do you think it's racism? Do you think it could be racism as to why so many of us? I know Mr. Darren said he sat in a black Santa's lap, but the rest of us, uh, we seem to be saying we were. When we did sit in Santa's lap, it was a white person. And I'm just asking if you think uh, that could be because of racism, the fact that so many of us have sat in the lap of a white Santa. I think it could be because that's trying to put a thought on younger people while they're growing to make them think that white people, they have more of the power and they control things around the world. If you don't be good, you won't get present if, if you're bad. You'll get presents. You're good. You'll get a whole bunch of cre- presents for Christmas. So it, yeah. Hmm. 
Wow. Uh, Joel or uh, Jay, did you all want to respond to that question? I I agree. Because saying that he's white and he's he's because saying that he's because saying that he's white and and he he says when when you be bad you don't get any presents and when you be good you get all the presents you want. But saying that really he really doesn't buy anything but the. The gifts under your tree your mom and dad bought. Hmm. Excuse me, this is... Someone knows. Excuse me, this is Darian. Can you pick me up on uh, 5338? My battery is about to go down. Yes, sir. I will do that right now. Okay, I got you. 5338, I got you. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, I'm here. Con- okay, gotcha. Um, context of white supremacy. Um, these young people sound a lot less confused than I was uh, at seven, eight, even twenty. Um, my last question, then I'll, I'll pitch back to Justice, and you can ask as, as many as you want. Uh, do any of you all um, think that you will be sitting with Santa Claus? Any any more? No. No. Hmm. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> Dig way <it>. too scary. <laughs> Dig it. Dig it. Right on. All right. I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty good. Uh thank you all for answering my questions. Uh Justice, if you would like to ask as many questions as you want, feel free. Um, if I may ask, uh, what is so fun about Christmas? You you get to open up your presents, and you get um to spend time with your family. Well, we I I don't get presents. If I do, it will be money. But the best part about Christmas for me is spending time with my family. Can you spend time with your family at uh, any time? Yes. Can you get presents any time? For my birthday. But lots of my family Anybody? members live out of town, so not every, not all the time, though. Anybody else? Yes. <coughs> yes. I get rewards sometimes when I um, read my book. Sometimes I get re- rewards. When I read my books, I get presents. Anybody else? Um, I just wanted to say that, uh, the, uh, the, what I have learned is that, uh, the greatest gift is, uh, or present is that, uh, you, you have a life and, um, you have, uh, you, you, you are alive, um, yeah, that's just, uh, what I have learned. You're alive to see them another year.
Do you think uh, Christmas is a holiday that white people made up? Yes. Yes. Anybody else? Yes. Um, why do you think racism is here? What? So why people can't control everything? Because white people... Need it up. Because white people fear black people so that they can gain gain more control. Anything else? All right, um, I don't have any more questions, but uh, um, I'll think of some more uh, in the broadcast. Context of white supremacy. Very interesting. Very smart young people we have with us uh, this evening. I'm glad uh, they were able to spend some of their time with us. I know they could have been doing lots of other things. Um, My man, uh, Darian. Darian, he uh, sounds very confident. A um, lot of respect for that to come on a program and speak to everybody and be confident. Um, did you did you say? That, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, did you say earlier that black people cannot be racist? Did I hear you say that? Yes, sir. Wow. What if? What if another black person listened to you and said, you know, I I heard you saying those things and talking about Christmas and saying maybe it could be racist. I think you are racist against white people. What would you say? I would probably stand, I would stand um, by my opinion. And if they continue to fight, I would, I would just let them think what they want to think. And I would just walk away from them. Hmm. Hmm. So you Just don't think that, you, oh. Um just uh catch it uh, you, you said uh that white that black people can be racist or not. I said they cannot. Oh, okay. And and do, could you uh, share with us just again if the person they were saying, you know, Darian, I, I think you're racist against white people. Um, can you give us your explanation for why black people cannot be racist? Because black people, they they don't have the power. Well, right as of as of this time, they don't have the power to oppress another race. They they can be prejudiced by judging people and thinking what they want to be thinking what they want to do or think, but they can't oppress another race, like put them through slavery or or control them completely like the like the whites did with the African Americans. Hmm. hmm. What if they said, well, you know, President Obama, he's a he's a black person and he's the president. I mean, he's got a lot of power to, you know, mistreat someone. What would you say to that? President Obama, he he does have power, but he doesn't have the power to control us because he's the president, and he's not just because he's the president. He's not in control. There are still there are still people ahead of him. He has to he has to approve of the people in other houses to to do to set laws out and to set goals and everything. So he's not in total control here. 
Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Wow. I have to think about that. Pretty solid answer. Um, see, this is what you all can do. All of us could be doing this. Just being honest, being honest, being honest with your children. Wow. Um, okay. This is a this is a group question. Group question. Throwing this one out for everyone. And uh I guess I'll start with uh Jewel since I was just questioning uh Mr. Darian quite a bit. Um but this is for everybody though. Uh the question is what do you think about white people? Uh and I'll start with uh Miss Jewel. Uh Miss Jewel, what do you think about white people? White people are okay. We treat them nice. They'll treat us nice. <laughs> they treat us. And they treat us nice. We'll treat them nice. Keep in mind, I just want to say she doesn't have much interaction with white people. But... Oh, okay. No worries. No worries. Uh, hmm. Have you ever been uh, mistreated by a white person? Mistreated? Have you ever been mistreated? Yeah, like treated badly by a white person? No. Oh, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that's How about uh, di- directly? Not that, not that I know of. Like, um, for example, like, has a white person uh, pushed you or um, or uh, put your hands uh, on you uh, fi- uh, physically? No. Again, I just wanted to keep in mind, she, the school she goes to, there's not even one white child at that school, so. That's good. like Joel doesn't have a whole lot of contact with white people, which uh, is probably a good thing. Um, let's see. Uh, Jay, our young listener. Uh, Mr. Jay, how do you how do you feel about white people? Excuse me, who was that question to? Uh, I thought we had a third uh, young participant on the program. Uh, He said his name was Jay. Um, I was asking him if uh, if he's still with us. Uh, Let me think about it. Oh, okay. No worries. Any of you all, if you if you need to take a little time to think about your answer, that is fantastic. Just say, you know, hey, Gus, give me a little time. I need to think for a minute. No problem. Take as long as you need. That's that's great. I should do that more often. So any question at any time, if you need a little time to think, just say, hey, give me a little time and I'll get back to you. OK. Mm-hmm. What was the question? Uh, the question uh, what, excuse me, how do you feel about white people? I think that when you meet white people, you should put, you should put them all in the same category. Like, as when you meet them, you can't, you can't trust them right, right from the start. 
you have to you have to let them prove themselves of being trusted. Otherwise, you can't trust them. You can't trust white people unless they prove themselves. Wow, wow. What uh, what would they have to do to prove themselves to you? They would have to show their loyalty and their respect to me at all times. Hmm. Uh, for how long would they have to keep this up? Like, you know, a week, a month, a year? How long would they have to, you know, show that they have this respect for you? They, there is no time limit. Have any have any white people uh, proven themselves to you uh, thus far that they're loyal and that they respect you at all times? No, not really. Wow. Wow. Do you uh, do you have contact with white people on a regular basis? Yes, I have contact with many white people. My school is predominantly white, so I have contact with many of them. Do you think a uh, white person has ever uh, been racist in mistreating you? Yes. Wow. Um. Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, I will uh, check with Justice. Justice, do you have some, some questions for our young listeners? Excuse me, young participants. Um, Darren, uh, has any white person ever, uh, physically, um, mistreated you at all? Maybe once or twice, but not many times. Uh, Jay? to uh, answer the question. The question was, um, has any white person mistreated you uh, physically? Yes. I don't have any more uh, right now. Context of white supremacy. Um, wow, wow, so interesting. Again, if anybody listening, if you have uh, non-white children, they don't have to be your children, but if you know them, if they're around, and you think they uh, would enjoy participating in this discussion and joining our brilliant young guests, uh, you can dial in. Uh, when you call in, just put a hand up so I'll know that there are uh, children waiting and we can add them to the discussion. Um, wow. Next question that I have, um, what does the term or the word, excuse me, what does the word racism mean to you? That's the question. What does the term racism mean to to you. Um, I will start with my bud, uh, Miss Jewel. Uh, what does the term racism mean to you? That black people like white people. I need to think about it. I need to think about that. Outstanding. Exactly what you're supposed to do, no problem. I will give you some time and, and then I'll check back after you thought about it a little bit. Um let's see. And even that is a great example. If more of us could do that, man, the number the number of problems that I could have avoided or just
totally <clears throat> solve if I had just done that as opposed to responding and saying something incorrect. Just take a little bit of time and think about what would be the best thing to say. Just, man, excellent, excellent example. Uh, let's see, Mr. Uh, Mr. Darian, uh, the question, uh, what does the word racism mean to you? Did did we already answer this question? Uh, did did I ask this question earlier, Justice? I thought I asked uh, about Christmas, and then I asked about uh, white people. How do you feel about white people? What do you think about white people? Did I? I don't. I don't think I asked about. I think I asked uh, about if if black people can be racist. Um, did I ask? Yeah. Did I ask this question, Justice? Uh, if black people can be racist. Um, yeah, I think you did. Did I ask uh, what does the term racism mean to you? Did I ask that question? Um, what does the term racism mean to you? Uh, I think you did, but I also asked uh, what do you think racism means? Oh, okay, okay. That might have been justice then. Okay, groovy, groovy. Um, let's see. I will ask a a different question then. Um, do you? And this this is for everybody. This is for everybody. Uh, do you have ideas on how racism can be stopped right now? Uh, do you have any ideas? Things. You know, non-white people or white people uh, could be doing that would stop racism from happening, like right now. Um, I'll start. I'll go back to uh, Mr. Darian. Well, and the the entire the entire European race could be eliminated, or it could just not be here at all. Racism wouldn't exist. Okay. Do you mean, like, white people not being here and then racism not being here? If white people yes. weren't here? Um. Yes. Yeah. No. Black, we, we, can, we can talk to um, white people about race, their um, racism be, behavior. And and how it makes people feel and how it makes people feel you can stand up for your rights and yourselves and and um until they respect you, and if they don't, then you might have just have to do what you have to do or just leave them alone and let them leave you alone. I would say uh, start a group um, of uh, non-white people um, and just uh, talk about racism. Mm. Hmm. Then after yeah. when we figure out a plan, then uh, I bet we can probably uh, get rid of racism any time now. We need to talk to the racist about hmm. racism. Hmm. What should we say to the racists? What should we say to them? What? Why would you kill us? Hmm. Well, let's it, see. What if? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. 
I would say I would say there's no reason to to oppress another race because you're no better than we are. Maybe they feel less than we are. That's why they treat us that way. Do you mean white people? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. What if uh, when we go to talk to the racists, we go to talk to white people, and... You said, uh, you know, why do, Why are you killing us? Why are you mistreating us? And they say, well, it's fun. We just, we like doing it, and we don't really like you all. And, uh, you know, we just, this is something that we think is, is, is fun to do. What would you say? You must be the devil. Hmm. Hmm. I would I would ask them for an actual explanation, not just because it's fun. And and I would say and I would say y'all wouldn't y'all wouldn't like it if we started killing y'all because of y'all skin color, would you? Mm, no, we wouldn't. But uh, we we just you know we like we like mistreating you all, you know, and we think that you all might do that. You all might you know want to turn around and get revenge on us, you know, for all the years that we've mistreated non-white people, black people. So, you know, we, we just, we think this is the smart thing to do. And it's fun. We have a good time mistreating you all, so we're going to keep doing it. Well, why is it fun? Uh, it's just, I mean, we've always been doing it, you know. It's like uh, we really have a good time calling you all names and um, making movies where you all look really silly, and it's just uh, it's just fun. We've just been doing it for so long now. It's uh, it's just uh, it's, it's just something that we really have a good time. We get a lot of jokes mistreating you all. Well, it'll be fun for us to do the same. Like mistreat us. Mistreat us like you've mistreated us, or mistreat oh. you like you've mistreated us. Oh, yeah, see, we, we think you all might do that. That's another reason why we do it, too, because we think you all might want to do, you all might want to mistreat us. So we just, we try to keep you all uh, in check so so you can't mistreat us. One day it may happen. Hmm. Wow. 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 <laughs> Accent? Have you ever mistreated white people and mistreated you? Can you say the question one more time, please, Miss Jewel? Uh, Jewel. Have you ever mistreated white people the way they mistreated us? Uh, no, I have not been able to do that. No. Have we ever been able? <coughs> have we been able to to mistreat white people the way they mistreated us? Uh, as a group, if you're talking like black people as a group, uh, I do not know of black people ever mistreating white people the way they have mistreated us. Um, I've never heard of that. Um, anybody else on the line? Have you all have you all heard of that? Heard of I have um, not. black people. Sorry, go ahead. 
Oh, I was saying I have not. You mean like heard of black people mistreating white people the way white people mistreat us or Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Oh, I see. I have a question. Um, I have a question, and I'm actually going to try to see if I can also give an answer. So I'm going to ask this question, and then I'm going to take some time to think to see if I can share a thought as well. Have any of you on the line, have you ever seen a older black person? Uh, I'm, I'm going to say adult. <laughs> uh, have you ever seen a grown-up? or adult black person um, acting kind of weird around white people. And I say weird, they were behaving in a manner that just seemed strange. It seemed different than the way you normally see that person behave. Does, uh, does that question, does it, do you all understand that question? Zach and Cody, Disney Zach. Channel. Disney Channel. This is this on television. Yes. Okay. Are Zach and Cody are they black people? No, Mister Mosby is. Oh, okay. That's weird. Huh. So, Mister Mos. Mister Mosby is a black person. Yes. Okay. What does he do that's, you know, weird or strange when white people come around? He's like the comedian of the show and he acts goofy and and he's always like acting kind of girly and his name, his real name was a girl name. I can't remember cuz I don't watch that show anymore, but his real name was a was a woman's name. They had him acting crazy. He likes to jump in people's arms while people are talk talking. He just acts crazy. He's kind of like a tool for white people. Toy? Does uh does any what is uh you said is the gentleman's name Mosby? Is that his name on the show? It's Mosby. Um, can you say it one more time for me? Mr. Mosby. Mr. Mosby. Gotcha. Mr. Mosby. They, and I they think call him in, this, in his family, they call him Mary Ann Mosby. Hmm. Huh. Wow. So interesting. So interesting. And I think um uh Mr. Mosby is uh the person who um in charge of the hotel. In um in uh In uh, the Street Life of Zach and Cody. Wow. 
Well, wow. he's really he's really not in control of the hotel. If you, I, I don't watch it anymore, like I said, but if you watch the later shows or later on in the shows, like he's not really in charge of the hotel. You notice that the hotel is named the Tipton and London Tipton. She's really in charge. Like she tells him to do something, he has to go by his. He has to go by her orders and do what she says. Do what. She wants to the hotel and everything, so it's really her her hotel. <laughs> wow, this is uh, I didn't. I said repeatedly, if uh, if I had a improved quality of life, I would watch a lot of television and I would watch with a notepad. Uh, I've never seen this show, uh, Zach and Cody, the uh, the sweet life of Zach and Cody. I've never. Yes, yes, ma'am. Excuse me, London Tipton. She's a little girl, and uh, Mr. Mosby's a um, grown man. Oh, uh, is uh, London Tipton? Is she white? Yes, yeah, she is. Okay. Okay. She's okay. Asian. Oh, she's Asian. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. I have never seen this show, um, but I'm looking at... uh, I just went to Wikipedia. This is not the best source of information, but it's a good start. You can, you know... I'll probably try and watch an episode, but they have a picture of this guy, um, Mr. Mosby. Apparently, his name is Marion. Is that his name, Marion Mosby? Yes. Okay. They have a picture of him, and he has on, like, a pastel green jacket with a pink yeah. tie. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I just, I'll read you. All. I'm not going to talk too much, but I'll read a little bit. This should be very interesting for listeners. Think of, uh, ima- this is what your children are watching, right? It's the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, the emasculation even here. Okay, this says Marion Mosby is the uptight manager of the Tipton Hotel who speaks with an extensive vocabulary and an urbane vernacular, along with speaking a number of different languages besides English, French, Japanese, Swahili, Spanish. He is often annoyed by Zach and Cody Martin's schemes and antics to the point that they have vowed to never have any children of his own. I'll just rewind that really quick uh, to the point that he may have vowed never to have any children of his own. Although he acts as though he does not care about the boys, he actually has a great deal of affection for them. For example, when they went to the baseball game and he caught a ball for Cody, ultimately making him the most hated man in Boston, uh, and in an episode of The Little Sweet Life on Deck, when Zach was framed for stealing a necklace, Mr. Mosby said that he knew and that he wasn't a thief, although it is shown that he actually calls him many other things before stating that. Um, oh, I know. Man. Man, I got to read this last sentence. <laughs> um, in the episode The Ghost of 613, it is revealed that Marion Mosby started out at the Tipton as a bellhop and had a voluminous fro. Um, I'll just leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. This is The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody with uh, Mr. Marion Mosby. Hmm. Thank you for sharing, uh, Miss Jewel, because I had never even heard of this show. You're welcome. Oh, the oh, the question I forgot. Did anybody else have uh, an answer to the question? Um, that's how we got started on all this. Have you seen an adult or grown-up black person acting strange, acting weird around white people? And when I say strange or weird, I just mean uh, behaving differently than they normally act. Uh, anybody else? Do you feel it? 
celebrate Halloween? Uh, I do not. I do not. Anyone on the call? Do any of you all celebrate Halloween? Oh. No. No. Um, I'm still thinking on my question as well. Um, Justice, did you have uh, any any questions that you wanted to ask? Yes. Um, do you think uh, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody is a racist video? Yes. Yes. Anybody else? I can't see it. Um, I don't have any uh, more. Well, at this time, but I'll keep thinking of some more. I'm uh, I'm actually having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I wasn't laughing at you. I am too. I am too. What I was. What I was laughing at, um, man, I mean, I was just, I was looking at other information about this character, Marion Mosby, uh, and I was reading more, and uh, I'll, I'll share a little bit of what. <laughs> um, man, this is crazy. I can't even believe this. Okay. Um it says uh, a running gag of the sweet life of Zach and Cody is that Mr. Mosby, uh, that's this black guy, often makes a fool of himself in front of people, should say white people. Uh, for example, hitting a baby doll that wouldn't stop crying against a chair when a woman with a baby walked by. I'm sorry? Or could you say that again, please, uh, Miss Jewel? Jewel? Um, what do I remember? I remember the show. Oh, you saw this when uh, Mr. Yes. Mosby, when he hit the baby doll on the chair? Yes, he when the baby ne never stopped crying. Wow. Wow. This is what your children mother, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, when his mother comes, they you can tell that that's not another person. You can tell that's just him in a dress, and and, and she's, they, she's fat, and she acts crazy and stuff, and he acts totally different around her. He's always like mommy and all that, and acting crazy. Did you, is he in a dress? Did I hear did I hear that correctly or Yes his he mother, is. Yeah, his mother it's you can tell it's not a, when his mother appears you can tell it's not a different person. It's just him with a dress on. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Oh, it was back in Beulah. Is her name Beulah? Is that his mom's name? Beulah Mosby? What? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> what in the world? What in the world? I cannot believe this. The the black male actor who plays Mr. Mosby, his name is Phil Lewis. Uh, it says, I'm just reading, this is all on Wikipedia. I've never seen the show. It says that Rose Mosby, that's his grandmother. Do you all know Rose Mosby? Oh, the I saw his grandmother come to the um to the um ship, the hmm. hotel. Okay, it says she was on the episode that's named "A Nugget of History," um, and it says that Phil Lewis also played the grandmother. So 
<laughs> you got Mr. Mosby getting an address, I presume, to play his own grandmother, to play his own grandmother, to play his own grandmother, to play his own grandmother. Um, and uh, she helped Zach get an A in history. She carries a large purse filled with many objects that realistically wouldn't fit into it, like a baseball bat, a vacuum cleaner, and an anchor. Um, wow. This is and so then they, And then they made her so fat that when she went to school with Zach, she sat down in the chair, like the little desk that, that are built in with the chair. She sat down in it, and she got stuck. And she never hmm. could get out. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Wow. I'm gonna have to watch this uh this cartoon now. Um <laughs> The Sweet the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Um Hmm. Um try I'm just trying to see if this program still Does this show still come on? Do you all know? Yes. And Mr. Mosby, he wears he wears clothes and his he always wears shorts that come above his knees. Hmm. Wow. <sighs> Context of white supremacy. Context. And he wears a jacket over his shirt. He wears a jacket over his shirt? And a tie, yes. And a tie. Wow. Wow. And a pocket hanky. Say that one more time. And a pocket hanky. A pocket hanky, okay. Wow. Wow. Do they have uh, any of the other males on the show wearing dresses at any time? Do you all remember? No. Okay. No. Unless it's, um, unless it's Just, Cody. Has Cody ever been? Yeah. yeah, Cody has. Oh, okay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Homosexual. When he's just trying to act funny. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wow. This is what your children are watching. See? See? And just it's imagine. It's made by Disney. And it's made by Disney. It's made by Disney. Um. Wow. Wow. Um, I, I said I was trying to think. I am remembering when older black people, when I was like you all's age, older black people, when they were around white people, I don't remember them cursing very often. I remember black people cursing around other black people on a pretty regular basis. I don't remember black people cursing around white people too often. That's that's one thing that I can say that's strange or unusual that I, I, I noted when I was young about how black people change and act a little strange around white people. Like in my barber shop that I go to, they like when like when white people come in, they, they they don't use they don't say the cuss words and stuff and they don't use the N word. When the white people come in they, they be casual and they don't they don't talk rudely and stuff. Wow. Wow. So they stop saying the N word when white when white people come in. Yes. Wow. <laughs> do, do they have a meeting? Do they get together and say, Oh, wait a minute, it's a white person here. We gotta stop. Let's let's change the way we talk. Do they have a meeting? No, they just automatically they just automatically stop like they tell each other they tell each other to stop saying it and and they just stop saying it till that person leaves. Wow. Wow. If somebody 
says the N word, will someone, you know, correct them? Will someone say, "Hey, you shouldn't say that"? My my father corrects them sometimes. Okay. If they're, if they're using it, if they're using it too much, and if they're using it, and if they're overly using the word, um, my father corrects them. But since they they grew up, they grew up um, in that kind of society. They it's a habit for them. So they do, so they use those word those kind of words upon each other. So my father my father does correct them sometimes. Okay. Cool. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Uh context of white supremacy. Uh Justice, do you have uh questions you would like to ask? Um nope, not at this time. Okay. Very interesting. Um, that at least it's it's been my observation that can be dangerous to uh, correct another black person in public. Uh, it can lead to conflict. Have you ever seen uh, like arguments uh, at the barbershop between black people? Yeah, like my father told me he went to the barbershop to get his hair cut one time, and one one person there was calling one of the women there the B word, so my father automatically corrected them and conflict almost happened, but I he I don't know how it ended though. Oh. Mm mm mm. Pretty common, unfortunately. Um Wow. Uh, do you? I guess I'll ask this to everyone. I'll uh, I'll start with uh, Miss uh, Jewel. Um, do you see black people or non-white people um, doing things that they should not be doing? Like if we're gonna if we're gonna end racism, uh, black people shouldn't be doing these things. Are there any specific times, specific things that you? I'm sorry. Oh, oh. Yeah, I can hear you, Justice. Um, oh. I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. My my fault. Mixed up my voices. Um, yeah, the the May you, may you please repeat that question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, are there any things that you see black people doing? that they shouldn't be doing, that they should not be doing. If we're black people are serious about ending racism, um, you know, and, and we're trying to organize our thought, speech, and action towards ending racism right now, uh, we should be doing things and not doing things. Are there any specific things that you see black people doing that you're just like, oh, man, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be doing that if we're going to end racism? Sometimes yeah. I do. Like, like picking fights and like picking fights and um and like sometimes when you go in neighbor some neighborhoods with that are predominantly black like the ghetto they they um they always like sometimes when when the candy cu- truck comes by they have candy like Lucas and stuff and they have candy cigarettes like when you bite them or stuff like that they they produce smoke or something or powder that looks like smoke in it makes the child think that they're really smoking. Hmm. Is it okay if I say sometimes I see bad people on pair of pins? You see bad people doing what? I see sometimes I see bad people on pair of kings. There's the all the um the little man he's trying to make fun of all the people in that's on the beach. Hmm. Is this a is this a television show? Yes. Oh, okay. What's the name of the show? Pair of Kings. Pair of Kings. Pair of Kings. Is it uh, black people on this show? Is it white people? Yeah, 
there's white there's a white boy and a black boy. Okay, okay. What do you see the black person They're doing? They're friends. They're friends. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, is the black person doing anything incorrect other than being friends with a white person? No. Hmm. That's interesting. But there's a boy. There's an other boy. He's he's white and he he's mixed with white and black, and he 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 doesn't. He's so little. He has six toes. He has six toes, and he's making fun of the um kings. How do you know? You said he's uh, black. He's mixed. He's black and white. How do you know? Uh, how do you know that? Because I can. I can tell. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I get kind of confused with that sometimes. <laughs> I make. I make mistakes uh, about that sometimes. But okay. I have to. This is another television show. I will. I'll have to check out. Um, after the program. Um, wow. Is it uh, anything else that you all see um, that you all see black people doing that they just they shouldn't be doing? Anything else? Acting silly. Acting silly. Around white people. And uh, that's entertaining them. And, and uh, black people shouldn't be entertaining white people. Hmm. And I think that black people need to stop listening to rap music. Oh wow! Why 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 should we stop listening to black mu- uh, to to rap music? Because because uh, most of the rap music that cool. there is good rap music, but most of the rap music uh, that are made that is made by black people, it it's um it it's calling the the uh, it's calling woman like the B word and the H words and all that and it's using inappropriate words and inappropriate um inappropriate um what's the word I'm looking for? Some people it, just it, don't it, want us to learn on the radio. Uh. Well some rap music so that's is why they, So that's why they, they they put that music on the radio so that we can listen to it. So we can stay dumb. Wow. Wow. You think, uh, do you think white people want black people to stay dumb? Yes. Wow. Why do you say that? To control us. Hmm. Um, Gus, uh, can I just ask this one quick question really quick, and then you can go ahead? Help yourself. Do you all have any uh, white friends? I have white associates, but not friends. I don't have any white friends. Anybody else? Um, what, uh, like, uh, like, what are, uh, white associates? Like, people you speak to, or just the people around you? I see. Oh, yeah, that was my last question for right now. Context of white supremacy. (laughs) Tater Pie is listening right on. 
Um, um, do you, uh, Mr. Darian, do you suspect that uh, any of your white associates uh, could be racist? Um, I had a white friend. He's my next door neighbor. I sometimes hang out with him a little bit, but I noticed I I began to notice uh, that more I hang out with him. Like when his white friends come over, he starts to act a little different. He treats me uh, worse, and he and then he like he his friend always and it's not a coincidence. His friend always says, "Let's go inside and play games," and and he's like, "Okay, okay," and Derry, and I'll be right back. So and I I was very I was very uh naive so I sat outside and waited and of course he never came out so I eventually went in and I eventually started I be I eventually began to notice and and I began to stop I began um to not not play with him much unless he came to my house I no longer went to his house to ask him to come out and play <laughs> Wow. Hmm. Very interesting. I think probably a lot of people listening have been in the exact same position. Um, just real uh, confused about white people and not understanding. And yeah, I, I, I feel you completely. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, make sure I ask. Uh, do I have any other group questions? Christmas stunts. Uh, oh yeah, Darren, did you get interrupted? I wanted to make sure you finished your point. You were talking about why black people should discontinue, should stop listening to hip hop. Um, did you want to finish your thought on that? Oh no, I wasn't interrupted. I. I, I I think that black people should stop listening to rap. Um, hip hop is okay, but not all of it. Okay, okay. What is the difference for you between what you know is acceptable to listen to and what's not acceptable? There, to me, they're they're both they're both kind of the same. It's just the the lyrics that that are negative, like the images, the inappropriate images, and the inappropriate language that are used. Okay. I dig it. I dig it. Do you tell uh do you tell your your friends uh that are black, you know, hey, we we should not listen to music that's got a lot of cursing and um saying bad stuff about black people, bees and all that. Do you tell that to your other uh black friends? I have, but they insist that they still listen on it, listen to it. So mm. I just let them listen to their music. I listen. I I just don't listen to music much anyway. So I just let them listen to the music they want to listen to, and I just sit down and I probably read a book or do something that I want to do. Wow, read a book. Wow, wow. Uh, what uh, this this is for everybody. Um, can you uh, tell us? Uh, Tell us a great book that you've read or are reading currently. Everybody on the line. You forgot the title. Go get it. We beat the street. Um, how a friendship pact led to success. Yeah, that's. What it was We Beat the Street, How a Friendship Pact Was Led to Success. Wow. Okay. What is that about? It's about three African-American uh, doctors. They, When they were younger, they were children. They both they didn't know each other yet. They always got into trouble and stuff and got sent to juvenile a few times. And then they, they, they met each other at a high school. And then one day they were going... They were going like go play play basketball. Then uh, the principal told them to go to the library, 
where there was this meeting to where they would get accepted into a college or applications for a college, and they did that. And then what, when they all met each other, they made they made a, a pact. They made a commitment to each other that they would all grow up and become doctors in their own degree. And and um, that book is about how they how they how they actually did that. And they're still doctors today. I'm uh, actu- I'm actually uh, reading a book now. It's called uh, Magic Puppy: A New Beginning. Beginning: A Tiny Golden Retriever ne- Puppy Needs a uh, Friend. That's the book that I'm reading now. The book that I'm reading: Black Scientist and Invent- Inventors Book One. Young folks reading. Hopefully, you all picked up uh, some books from uh, these young folks. Um, Justice, did you have uh, any other questions? Um, I don't think so. But uh, if I do, I'll just um, call it out. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, before I go to the phone lines to see if people have questions and if you want to call, the number is 347-215-6071. Um, before I go to the phone line, um, I want to, uh, if the parents of these, uh, good young people are, at, on the phone or near the phone. I, I want the uh, I want all of the children to stay on the line, but the parents, uh, if you all are there, um, just if we could get a, a quick word from you all, um, just to hear from from folks. You know, what did you hear about? Uh, what you heard on the program? What did you think? Um, just any thoughts that you all have. I think that would be constructive. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to read this. Tater pie is, is silly. Um, but the parents, the parents of all of the young people, unless unless any of you young folks had something to say. No. No. Okay. Um, yeah, the parents, if, uh, if you all are there, uh, I was just curious if you had any thoughts uh, on having your child participate uh, in the program, and uh, what you thought about uh, about what you heard, uh, if the parents are are on the line and able to comment. Uh, I, I thought it was a, a good experience for my daughter. Like I said, it's 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 an introductory experience. She's she would just introducing her to a lot of things, and and you know, as a young parent myself, I'm you know trying to learn when to introduce certain things to her. So. Um, Actually, uh, justice inspired me to uh, to uh, to uh, just basically just start giving it to her straight, you know. Yeah, I'm on. This is Khalil. I'm. I mean, I'm uh, actually quite proud of uh, of uh, of my son. Uh, because he pretty much, you know, said what he felt, you know, and uh, just the fact that uh, he's, you know, much further off than I was, like you said earlier, you know, much further off than I was at 20 years old. So, you know, just the fact that he's learning and often, you know, just give him examples and, you know, let him deal with his scenarios and, and the fact that he's that he's actually uh, taking it in, not that I doubted that any, but the fact that he can you know express himself in his own way, you know, has been uh, you know has been uh, good uh, to hear him do that, and, I, and, I, and it lets me know that he's receiving it. You know, I'm not something I'm not forcing down his throat, and I'm actually you know giving him the opportunity to see it, 
And I think that's the most important thing is that I'm pointing out uh, things to him that he can see for himself and uh, teaching him to follow logic. And when he sees it for himself, then really the lesson is more is more indebted, uh, embedded rather, in, into him. So uh, I think he, uh, he expressed himself quite well for the first time being on any type of interview of this matter, of this nature, and he was quite nervous uh, originally. Yeah, I think he came off as 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 a uh, super sharp. I had to do a lot of coaching with my seven year old. She's over here picking at her face. She's because she was nervous. She was she was very nervous as well. But I think he was super sharp though. Uh, I have uh, been thoroughly impressed uh, with uh, everyone. Um, seems like everyone was prepared. They uh, seemed confident. Um, way, way far ahead of where I was, even at uh, at 20. Um, man, I think I would have probably been trying to debate and figure out a way to say that black people could be racist. Um, man. Uh, uh, eight one eight. She did. She mailed a question in um, for the children. Uh, since we were talking about um, Zach and Cody, she wanted to ask all of you: um, When you watch the television shows on the Disney Channel, do you feel good about being a black person? Yes. Let's see. So I heard, Can you repeat uh, it again? Yes, yes, ma'am. The question, when you watch the television shows on the Disney Channel, do you feel good about being a black person? I never thought about that. Hmm. Hmm. Do you feel uh, good about being a black person anytime? Yes. Yes? That's what I said, yeah, I'm great. Because I'm black. Okay. me, it's uh, good to be a, uh, at least a non-white person because um, if, uh, if you were white, then I mean, you're a racist, but if you're non-white, then uh, you're not. So it's good to be thankful that you're non-white or black. Did uh, the other uh, good young people, uh, Mr. Darian and uh, Jay, did you all hear that question? Um, when you watch television shows on the Disney Channel, do you feel good about being a black person? I no longer watch Disney Channel. Oh, okay. Uh, the question continues. She goes on to ask, uh, if you were a white person watching the Disney Channel, do you think you would feel good about being a white person? Yeah, because they have all the power. Hmm. And uh, probably uh, the television show has white people on it, and I bet the white people are going to be doing the the heroic things and and good, st and good stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Can you repeat that? Uh, the yes, you were talking to me, correct? I was talking were to you? Justin. Oh, sorry, my fault. <laughs> Um, what was the question that I asked, Gus? I forgot. <laughs> uh, I had asked the question and people started responding. Well, I was reading a question, rather, about the Disney Channel. Um, mm-hmm. And people were responding. And I believe you came in while people were responding. Okay, did you hear what the question was? I don't remember my question, but, uh, yeah. But if you go back, like, uh, in the broad, if you go back, uh, in the broadcast, then, yeah, you could, uh, um, you can, I can ask, uh, you that question again. Uh, on a different show. But I'm sorry, I don't remember. Yeah, I'm not not recalling the exact question. My bad. My bad. Um, got me again. Um, let's see, did everybody... Remember. At any rate, I'm going to, uh, if it's acceptable, unless anybody else has questions or comments, um, I'm going to check the phone lines to see if anyone listening, if they have any questions they would like to ask. Um, anybody checking? Anybody have anything or questions? If you all had anything you wanted to say or questions, uh, uh, child participants or parents. If you have any knowledge, children, teach your children to help you with white supremacy. Sir? Amen. Excellent advice. Excellent advice. I did want to share this. Uh, this is from Tater Pie, loyal uh, listener. She caught when uh, Mrs. Uh, Jewel, when she said... Uh, uh, the one of the characters on the television program was mixed, uh, and I don't I don't think I used that term on this program. I don't think it's a correct term. Tater Pie, she caught that. She said, uh, "Who taught them the concept idea of non-white children with one non-black parent and one black parent being mixed? Uh, or I, I would even say uh, one white parent and one non-white parent being mixed." Um, she said that that concept supports the idea of race, in her opinion, and uh, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, we should, uh, I think, just in, in the interest of uh, accuracy with words, should uh, not use the term mixed, in my opinion. Um, did anybody want to respond to that? It, it kind of surprised me. Um when she said it herself, I don't know if it's something that we uh we uh we uh um uh, something that we've repeated around here but uh, nobody's mixed in. We we we're at least four generations four <laughs> at least four generations removed from the <laughs> from uh uh from any uh I don't know what you would call it, uh but we're at least we're at least four generations removed over, over here. Mm. And uh, I come from an old family, so my grandfather was born in 1903. So uh, if any, uh, it had to happen under a, 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 a non-consensual, uh, 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 had to be a non-consensual relationship. I had to be a, a, a rape. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't, I don't know actually where she. Uh, 
came up with that term, but um, like I said, we're going to be uh, talking a lot more, a lot more uh, straight talk about uh, about uh, racism, white supremacy. Take it, take it, take it. Um, it I was going to say, I think it's it's the programming um, because I, I know that term is um, widely distributed. Uh, I suspect they. I suspect they're saying it on, you know, Zach and Cody and and all the other programs. So, um, yeah, white people, it will be in use widely. So, I guess we should uh, be making sure that we. I mean, all of us, all non-white people, making sure we uh, counter that programming. Um, the uh, yeah. It, if you all have anything, you know, questions or comments you want to throw in, just you know, feel free. Uh, put your feet up. Be comfortable. Um, the person who called in uh, from a blocked number with a hand up, did you have a question for uh, our wonderful young guests? Yes, can I be heard? Yes, ma'am. Greetings, children, Gus and Justice. Um, This is 818. I have one quick comment. While you all were talking about the Disney Channel, I Googled it, and a question came up about should the Disney Channel have more black people on it. So after fielding through a few entries, I came to a Facebook page called Disney Channel Should Have More Black People. I went to thumb it up to like it, and a security check CAPTCHA screen came up. And would you believe the words that I'm supposed to type in is B Huzzies, B, then the word H-U-S-S-I-E-S, B Huzzies. I thought that was so, like, wow. B Huzzies. Uh, but I, I did have a question for the children, though. I wanted to know, when, when you all watch television shows on the Disney Channel, um, Nickelodeon, when you're watching shows that feature mostly white people in the uh, in the cast as the actors, do you ever feel inside like you wish you were white so that you could do the things that they're doing or enjoy the life or adventures that they enjoy? No. No. Justice? Um, can you please repeat that again? When you watch That's television okay. shows... When you watch television shows on the Disney Channel or on Nickelodeon and they have mostly white cast or, you know, the predominant white actors, um, young people... Do you ever watch those shows and ever wish or feel like you wish you could be white or maybe it would be nice to be white because you could enjoy the things that they enjoy or do the things that you see them doing? Or have um, you ever felt I that way? Um, I don't have a cable, so, you know, I don't uh, watch any of those shows and I don't uh, ever want to be white. Okay. Or anyways, I don't wish. <laughs> And 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 our little friend, what was his name again? Jay. Do you watch the Disney show or the Disney Channel or Nickelodeon? Yes. Do you watch shows on on either of those channels that have white people in them? Yeah. Have you ever watched any of those shows and seen the white people doing cool things or having fun and wish that you could be white so you could do that too? I don't know. Okay. Thank you. I know watching uh, Gus, speaking for myself, I know uh, throughout the time that I was confused, I definitely find myself uh, identifying with white people watching television and uh, reading books and what have you uh, on a frequent basis. And in fact, I even noticed in some films, oftentimes the non-white person that you want to be like or sympathize with, oftentimes it's because the white people in the film. Uh, have accepted that person, validated that person, so you're connecting to them because it's like white people have approved it. Um, 
but that's you know my two cents. Uh, I do see. remember when I was growing up watching a lot of shows that had white people on them, and I got bussed out to a school that was uh, in a white neighborhood with mostly white children, and at times, not that I wanted to change my skin or hated who I was. But I did think sometimes I wonder if I was white, would I be able to live in an area like this or afford to buy certain brand name clothes that they bought? Or, you know, would things be more fun? It it did have an effect on me. And watching a lot of television shows where the young people in them were white. Oh, yeah. It has a big impact. Big impact. The uh, dark and lovely and all those perming kits. Uh, are not multi-million dollar industries for nothing. Um, We have uh, about eight minutes left in the live stream. Uh, If you want to call the program, you should call now, 347-215-6071. The number again, 347-215-6071. Um, person who called in uh, last four digits seven zero one two seven zero one two. Did you have a question for uh, any of our brilliant young guests? This uh, is for all the children. Do you like white people? Do you like white? White people are okay to me. Again, her contact is very minimal. I don't um, like white people. Just Darian had to take a break, so I, uh, I can't speak for him personally. And uh, oh, okay. we're, we're going to have to sign off because we're on cell phones. We're out of town and. That is pretty low. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for uh, having him uh, participate. We uh, we thoroughly enjoyed it. He did a uh, outstanding job. Thank you for the show and, and your time, and, and and each one of your guests as well. Thank each one of you, uh, you little people, young young uh, future um, uh, counter racist of tomorrow. As well as today, uh, kind of races of today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you mm-hmm. guys uh, for your time and for your 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 opinions. And you've taught, uh, I'm sure you've taught each one of us adults valuable lessons in uh, how we should think about our response to questions. So uh, thanks to each one of you, each one of your, your young guests today. For sure. Thank, Thank you. Keep up the good work, sir. Goodbye and have a good night. You too. Um, the gentleman that called in uh, 7012-7012, did you have a uh, question uh, for any of our young folks? Hey, guys. Uh, no, I didn't have a question. Thank you for taking my call. And uh, thank you, young people. Uh, and thank you, parents. I uh, appreciate you guys. For sure, for sure. Um, let's see. Person who called in, uh, everybody who called in, your line is open. 2736, did you have a question uh, for any of the uh, young folks? Uh, no, I'm just listening right now. Okay. okay. I do uh, have a... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I do have a a couple of books I want to recommend for the young people. If you'd like to read a book that may help you understand racism, white supremacy more, it's a series I enjoyed when I was young. Um, The first book is called Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. And the second book is called Let the Circle Be Out. What's the the second one? Let the Circle Be Unbroken. I don't remember the author, but those were I, I really like those books. Circle be unbroken. 
and Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, and I think they take place in the 1930s, 20s or 30s in the South. And it's told from the um, viewpoint of a young black female. Um, Eight women said something earlier about getting bussed out to a uh, white school. And um, I was actually involved in a program like that in Massachusetts called METCO. And I'm wondering, was that, uh, was that, is that, is this, was there something similar like that going on everywhere? Um, I don't know. They called it the GATE program out here, which stood for Gifted and Talented Education. I just remember in fourth grade, we took a test for it. On the yeah. test results, they told my mom that, uh, they wanted to enroll me in the program and send me out to a specific school that had it. So we all got bussed out to the school that was uh, out by the beach. Did you have host parents? Did you stay over the house like uh, every other Monday, something like that? Oh, no, we just took the bus to school every day. Okay. 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 I actually had a, uh, some white host parents. It was... It was crazy. It was like all the white kids were just, you know, they were they were begging for me. <laughs> mm. <laughs> for their parents to be my host parents. But uh I didn't know I didn't know that, that was that that was uh that was done other other places. I didn't I didn't know. Uh the other two people that called in, your line is open, four three seven two your line is open, and the person from a block number, your line is open. Uh, we have done a brilliant job the entire week on keeping the background noise down. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, did any of the newer folks that called in, did you have a question or comment? And we have uh, two minutes left in the program, so if you, uh, the live feed is going to end, so you should probably call in right now. The number is 347 215 Six zero seven one. If you want to call before the live stream ends, uh, did any of the newer folks that called in, do you have a question or comment? No, I'm just listening. I have a comment, Gus. I just wanted to commend you for the way you interact with the children, um, just not being condescending or insulting of their intelligence and their ability to understand what we were talking about. Oh, right on. Um. A child as well, you know, no room to uh, begin the attitude. I learned quite a bit as well. <laughs> like, uh, gotta watch exactly. Zach and Cody. I'm, uh, I'm slouching. Zach and Cody is uh, got Tyler Perry all over again. Yeah, I had a quick uh, question. Go uh, oh. ahead. For uh, for uh, Joel's father, I'm not sure uh, your name, sir. Uh, Teron. Teron. Um, I guess uh, g- given your understanding of racism and white supremacy at, at this point in your life, um, and then I, I guess I'm wondering, what are your thoughts uh, towards your your parents or your uh, you know whoever was your caregivers that um, you know I guess sent you at the time to to go live with I guess temporarily. Uh, white host parents. You know, what are your, you what, know, are your what are your thoughts about that? They, 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 they just, you know, my my I, my analysis of this is like uh, you can't expect people to give you what they don't have. And what I mean by that is, my parents they didn't know any better. They didn't know any better. And uh, I'll give you a prime example. You know what I'm saying? I was in that I was in that program. I was doing very well. Like I said, I only stayed over the house on Mondays. Every other Monday, and uh, I was I was in that Metco program. I was I was thriving academically. My mother took me from there down to North Carolina, and I'd say within the next two years, I was classified as a behavior problem. They wanted to put me on uh, 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 they wanted to put me on meds. They wanted to do all these things, and um. Had the first set of white people not told my mother how brilliant I was, she probably would have believed the second set of white people that told her that I had a learning disability. So it it was just a lot of confusion, and they didn't know any better. You know, and uh, 
looking back on it, I mean, um, I'm not upset with them because I understand that they didn't know any better. As I begin to understand the system, it, it's a lot of confusion involved in it. I'm still confused about some things, even though I I have sort of an understanding of some things. So it, it, this, this is real confusing. Like I said, this is... This is mass confusion. Racism and white supremacy is mass confusion. And um, they were part of that confusion. Thank you. Uh, I thought I heard someone sounded like an older person. I'm not sure, but they also had a question or comment. I'll just get this in real quick. Um, I'm glad that children are participating in discussions on racism and white supremacy. I feel like we need all hands on deck to try to knock this problem out right away. So uh, very proud and and glad to have all the children that are participating on this call tonight. Uh, Justice, uh, Joel, uh, Jay, and uh, I'm forgetting the gentleman's name, um, Darian. Darian. So thank you. Uh, any of the prints that are online, even if you have, uh, if you called in and you don't, uh, you didn't have a non-white child participating, but if you are a parent and you're on the line, um, like what things have you been nervous in talking to your children about? Like are there things where you're like, oh, I, I might have to wait a little while to tell them about, you know, this particularly, uh, this particular part of racism, white supremacy. Has there been anything that you're just like, that's, I'm, I'm nervous about explaining this part of racism to my child. Hmm. You know, the thing, the thing with me is, um, I'm kind of, you know, um, it's like I don't know how you uh it's like trying to find a medium as to how to how your child can be successful and still yet not be so intertwined with uh, I don't even know the right words to put it because like I don't it's hard to I don't know which direction I know. I know what direction. I, let me see how I can put this. Uh, I want my child to be intelligent, smart, and successful. But under the system of racism and white supremacy, I'm not sure what that is. If that makes sense. When you say when you say successful in that context, sir, um, do you have a definition in mind um, for that term, the way you used it? Um, I guess I have an I, I guess I have an idea of what successful, what my version of success is, and to me, uh, success would be her being a business owner. And her uh, uh, multiplying and, 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 and creating a family so that uh, so that uh, uh, so that we continue to live on. Our bloodline continues to live on. If she if she, if she can accomplish those two things, I, I, I'll be happy. Um, 
Um, I would actually uh, like to ask a question uh, to the rest of the um, children on the line. Um, has any uh, has any of you guys uh, read the book The Adventures of Tom Sawyer? I read that. Okay. Um, the children at all? Have you ever read that book, Joe? What? Tom Sawyer, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer? Mm -hmm. No. No. Anybody else? Huck Finn, not Tom Sawyer. No. Anybody else or... No, but I think they were trying to take it out of school so the children wouldn't read it, and some white people were protesting that, saying it was like an all-American, you know, story, part of the, the uh, fabric of America or something. Hmm. I haven't read it yet, um, but I'm going to. It sounds interesting. I've heard that has a lot of racism in it. I think one of the black character's name is uh, Nigger Jim. I think that's in the his school, name. In the, in, the, in the school textbooks, is Nigger Jim? Uh, I, I mean, I believe the term nigger is used in the book. Whether his name is actually Nigger Jim or not, uh, I, I could be incorrect about that, but I'm pretty certain the term nigger is used in the book. Uh, is anybody on the call familiar well, I'm familiar with Swain because I read uh, Huck Finn, and yeah, the nigger, the word nigger is used uh, hundreds of times in Huck Finn, so I'm sure okay. I'm sure it's used a lot in Tom Sawyer as well. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. I do remember a book uh, called something like Kaffir Boy, something about, uh, it was about a park ride about in South Africa that we read in school. Anybody heard about that book? Castle like Castle or Castle Boy, something like that. Um, I would uh, suggest to uh, get it and um, pick up the racism in there. And uh, for all of uh, if anybody doesn't know um, who the author uh, was, it was uh, by. Newberry. Um, is it Mark Twain? Is he the author? Um, it says at the bottom by Newberry, but I might be incorrect. I uh, at the top it says Mark Twain, but at the bottom it says by Newberry. Newberry might be the publishing company and Mark Twain might be the author. Oh, I see. Hmm. Yeah, Twain is the author. Okay. Hmm. Okay. It looks like uh, Jim, uh, he is referenced as Nigger Jim. I don't know if it sticks in all of Twain's writing, but his name is uh, Nigger Jim in at least some of the works. They have a a line, many white people quote this line, where uh, I think Huck is running in, Huck and Tom, they're running in, and an older person asks them, they say they were in an accident, like a, something blew up on the river or something, and an older person asks Tom and Huck if they're okay and uh, they said, oh, yeah, you know, everything's fine. Nobody was hurt, just a nigger. And they keep rolling. Wow. Since we're talking books, I'd like to recommend some um, fantasy fiction by some 
black authors because I find that whenever we read fantasy fiction or we watch fantasy movies, um, white children get a lot of representation, so they get to see themselves being um, superheroes and saving the planet and saving the universe, whereas um, black kids don't get to see them themselves in that light as much. Um, but there are some black authors who write some really good um, fantasy fiction that you know allows black children to see themselves doing some great things. So if you don't mind, I'd like to recommend some, some authors to the parents, I guess. Oh, uh, help yourself. Okay. Um, the first one is N.K. Jemison. She has a really good trilogy. And that's some young adults. So I guess Justin, uh, Justice would probably be old enough to read that. Um, there's a really good graphic novel as well called By You by a man called Jeremy Love. And it's, it's very interesting. It's set in, in, I think, the 50s. And the protagonist is a young black girl. And, and also, um, Octavia Butler has some really good books. Is Octavia uh, Butler with a white person or something? Octavia Butler uh, is deceased. She's a black female. Um, I read Kindred, the female caller. Have you read Kindred? Yes. Okay. There is some. Could, um, interracial relationship. Uh, sexual intercourse between white people and black people. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, Man, I read that book when I first moved to the West Coast. I read uh, Octavia Butler's Kindred, which, pro Justice, you could probably read Kindred. Like, uh, if you want to do a show on that, you could probably read it, because uh, I think it's at your your reading level. Um, but that's, that's neither here nor there. I read it uh, when I first came to the West Coast, still very confused about racism. Uh, once I started, I think, Four months after we started doing the Cows radio program, uh, a non-white female was taking African-American literature class, and they were reading this book. And coincidentally, the course was being taught by a non-white person with a black parent and a white parent. And I think every book she had on the syllabus had was, and it was all black fiction, all of the books had some element of sexual intercourse between a black person and a white person. And for many of them, the main conflict was sex between a black person and a white person. Um, but Kindred, like, man, it's, uh, it is incredible. Like, uh, it's just incredible. <laughs> like all the way through it's, it's, uh, wow, man. Oh man. Yeah. I would, if, if anybody would like to do, uh, like a book, report program around Kindred, I'm down. Uh, it's really excellent illustration of white supremacy. And she was from here, uh, Octavia Butler. She was from this area. I would have had her. Mm -hmm, I would have had her on the program. Sure. She was, she was right here. Uh, the female who was giving out the author's names, uh, what was the first one you said? N.K. Jemison? Jemison, or? yes. J E M I S I N. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you have any other uh, authors or books that you wanted to share? Oh, uh, Octavia Butler has written other works. Just Kindred is, I think that might be her, the book that she's best known for, but I could be incorrect about that. But I think it's one of her more popular ones for sure. Do you have any other books or authors? Um, there's one more. Uh, her name is, uh, I think it's pronounced Nalo. It's N-A-L-O, and her last name is Hopkinson. And that's pretty much the only... Um, Black represent representation there is in, in 
that genre of literature, which is, you know. Have you called the program before? Yes, I have. Okay. Are your uh, parents, uh, were they born in Haiti? No, uh, we're from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Okay, different accent. I was picking up the accent. Got it. Okay. That's right. You were on the uh, the recent program with the females. Yes. Got it. Any of the uh, the children that are on the line? Like, how did you feel about doing the show? Um, it seemed like your parents were saying you all were a little nervous. Like, how did you how do you feel now that you've been on the show? Maybe they're not here anymore. <laughs> I know Darian is, is not here. Um, I guess that would be Joel and Jay, but they might not be with us anymore. I enjoyed it. <laughs> that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Such enthusiasm. She sounds like she's having a good time. Um, yeah, If you anytime you would like to... Uh, to come back, to call in, if you have an idea for something that you think would be constructive, something we should do, uh, let us know. Um, yeah, we it's it's always great to have uh, young people who are interested in talking about racism and uh, sharing their ideas. That's uh, fantastic. So open invitation, young lady. Does I, I, I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt. I said, okay. I felt good. <laughs> Dig it. Job well done, sir. Job well done. I have okay. uh, always had a good time. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I can't say that. I don't always have a good time doing the show. Well, well I wouldn't say always, but most of the time. Like when uh, <laughs> uh, Oreo was on the show. Uh. Uh, the the first time that she was on, uh, she was joking about white supremacy, and I did not have a good time there, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and some other shows. Like when Tim Wise was mistreating you. Oh yeah. Mhm. That one. I have, I have a question I wanted to ask uh, you all, the children. Would you all like to have books available for you? Or children that teach you more about racism, white supremacy? Yes. Yes. I would. And you, Jay? Can you ask me again? Would you like to have books? Would you yourself like to have books? for children to help you understand racism, white supremacy? Yes. Okay. Speaking of um, books, I was actually thinking of uh, writing a book for children um, when I started my blog. So, Go ahead, Justice. I think you should. I think that could be very constructive. I mean, uh, you uh like maybe older people can read it but you know uh it's pretty much for uh, younger children uh such as m- my age um and uh like even like uh older uh non-white people who are like really confused uh i think they would uh, probably want to read that
Make sure I remind folks uh, we'll be back tomorrow, December 25th, Saturday. Uh, we'll be here at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, uh, 6 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Pacific, uh, Jeremiah Kamara. Uh, looking forward to that. Lots about Christianity. Gather the whole family around. Tune in. Should be great. And uh, directly following that broadcast, the round table, Zeitgeist. Uh check out I guess a lot most people have probably seen those films, so uh come prepared. As soon as you call in, I'm gonna open your line up and uh we'll chat it up. So we'll have lots of uh counter racist programming all day for so called Christmas. Gus, do you wanna hear something sad that my friend told me yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> I reckon. He said, "This is this is the one I told you was into, you know, survival things." Um, so he's black, and his sister is black as well. And they went to the mall, and he said, "There's like a survival store there. I guess it can't be an outdoor gear store." And he wanted to go to the store, and his sister said, "What do you want to go in there for? Ain't nothing but white people in there. That's a white people store." He said, and he looked, and all the black people were in line to go sit on Santa Claus's lap, and not a white person was in the line to see Santa. They went into the survival gear store, and there wasn't a black person in there except him and his sister. <laughs> and there was white people in the survival store, but all the black people were in line to sit on Santa Claus's lap. Mm. That is an even better illustration of just how pathetic. Wait, er, er, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah. That's what domination looks like. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right on time. <laughs> uh, yep. 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 What did the children think about that? Did you all hear that? All of the children on the line? What did you think about that? The white people were at the survival store, I guess, getting ammunition, water, camping gear, blankets, that sort of thing. Uh, some means of making fire, water, cleaning water, uh, food. Black people were being to sit on a white man's lap. What do you all think about that, the children that are on the line? Well, Joelle got a little restless, so she's moving around now. But... Okay. Uh, I guess Justice and Jay, if she, if she comes back, I'll ask. Uh, the question again, so she, we can we can get her input. Okay. Justice uh, and Jay, what do you all think? Um, I think that uh, black people should not uh, sit on Santa on a big fat white dude's lap, uh, which we don't even know, and uh, yeah. Can you repeat that question again? Mm-hmm. The question is, what do you think about 818? She said that at the the mall or wherever, white people were going to the store, the survival store, to get things to make sure that they can live. Uh, they were getting uh, water, food, uh, guns, bullets. They were getting that sort of thing. Black people were going to sit on a white person's lap for Santa Claus. Um, just what do you think about that? I think that's incorrect to do, and they're not supposed to be doing that. Mm. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, I've said, you know, pretty consistently, I think the problem is that it's too hard. That's just been my observation from doing this program. It's too difficult to correct the confusion. Want to give white people, you know, 20, 30 years to throw out their programming. You know, they got Zach and Cody and all this other stuff playing uh, if you give them 20, 30 years to do that and it's 
no opposition, no attempt to counter that, it's almost impossible to correct that. Uh, you really got to catch it early. And it's been my observation, if you can, if you catch it early, the programming has the reverse effect because you see it. You understand what you're seeing. You're not confused about this stuff. So it's like you just get confirmation. If you give out correct information, um, what you say will be confirmed. Uh, when they go out and they watch Zach and Cody, they'll see the, the children. These folks picked out all the stuff that, you know, is incorrect about this, things that we talk about all the time. The children picked all that stuff out. He's in a dress. He's wearing these crazy colors. He's acting goofy. They picked all that out. Just tell the truth. Tell the truth. That's, you, know, you said in your experience, you said once people get 20 or 30 years of that, it, it's almost virtually impossible to, uh, to, uh, to bring them over to the uh, correct side. It's, just... it's not impossible, but... Man, white people, in my opinion, white people have nearly perfected this. It's not impossible, but it's very hard. It's very hard. Even even if uh, the person, you know, can grasp, yes, yeah, system of white supremacy is just, I mean, it's like uh, in the Matrix when they say they, they don't go after uh, a mind after a certain age because the mind has a hard time letting go. I have seen that with black people who are older, who have had more of that conditioning. They have a real hard time uh, breaking with all that. Has that has that not been your experience? Oh yes, oh yes, most definitely. Because I think, and I think. Um, <laughs> I think what what can go along with that is that um you know particularly black people in my experience um don't feel comfortable with the thought that people are opposing us you know and so even if a person kind of gets an understanding of what white supremacy is deciding to do something about that would then have to you have to accept the fact that there's people working against you and that you know that's something you should be doing something about and so the whole you know we we tend to we tend to be the opposite of white people in that regard in my view white people have a, a firm understanding of you know live free or die hard you know like ride or die like they they won't accept another scenario on earth without them being on top whereas with black people you know we don't we don't have that understanding. We we kind of prefer comfort and you know getting by and stuff like that, and then we end up being all right. So. Yeah, I think it's an abstraction. Um, a lot of black people make racism abstract and say you know it's a concept. It, it floats out there, but you know this isn't happening to me all the time. Is Joel back? No, I don't care though. But uh, one of the, you know, just getting a, a brief understanding of racism. Right? One of the questions I had, and I don't know if other people have observed that. Have, have you just walked around and looked at the facial expressions of black people? They just look angry. And um, I always wondered why does so many of us look. Angry. I mean, this was a, this was a, this was a while back before I had uh, before I had a little bit more of an understanding, and um, I think a lot of this can, can connect as to why they are angry. But as I started to get more of an understanding of racism and white supremacy, I mean, it just put me like a ton of bricks. I, I know why they're angry. They're being mistreated. And the worst part about it is they don't even understand that they're being mistreated or or, or, or how they're being mistreated. But I'm sure they're feeling the effects of it.
Tu vois Back, huh? Oh, okay. Um, uh, Miss Jewel, um, yes. one of our callers, she said that I think her friend was at the store and they just made an observation. And what they saw, white people were going to the survival store. Like, this is where you can get bullets. Guns, food, water, camping gear, um, things that you need to stay alive. Black people, they were getting in line to go sit on a white person's lap for Santa Claus. Uh, What do you think about that? White people going to the survival store, black people going to sit on Santa Asking basically, with all the white people were in a survival store buying things they need to survive, and all the black people were just in line to go sit on Santa's lap. Do you see a problem with that? No. You don't see a problem with that? Would you rather survive or sit on Santa's lap? Survive. So where's the so what's the problem? Where's the problem in that? I think that's something she's going to have to really uh, let sink in, Gus. That's great. That's great. I hope a lot of us. I I think it's not just her. I think this is this is a part of the programming where we don't understand this is what racism, white supremacy means in 2010. Black people are in line to go sit on a white man's lap White people are in line to buy guns. That's what racism, white supremacy means. Like, I don't think, I, man, I think there are very few black people, non-white people, who have that understanding of racism, white supremacy. Very few. And I think it's even fewer the people that have that understanding and can be truthful about it. I think it's it's, it's a sliver they understand that's what it means, but they just don't want to tell the truth about it. Um, but I mean, we we got to be honest about it. I mean, that, I mean that really that goes that can sum up twenty ten. <laughs> I mean, regardless of what stance you take uh, about what should be done, even if you know, hey, Frederick Jermaine Carter, I, we need to get those buses and head to Mississippi tonight. Even if that's the stance you take uh, when the people were saying, you know, you got to be ready to die and suicide and all that. It means, hey, I understand Uh, black people are getting in line to sit on a white man's lap. White people are getting in line to get guns. I understand that that's what it's like. And I'm still going to do battle. You know, just making sure you're clear about that. We want to be honest about that at all times. We can't, you know. We can't play with that. We can't act like, wow, that's, I mean, whoa, that's extraordinarily bad circumstances. If that Does that make sense, people on the line? Does that make sense? Am I talking crazy? It makes a lot of sense. I just wanted to elaborate on uh, my answer earlier about uh, the non-white people uh, in the line uh, waiting for for it to be a sound Santa's lap. And, um, I mean, that is just really incorrect. I mean. But I, I think that a lot of black people think that, or a lot of non-white people think that only white people can save them from other white people, i.e. Jesus or a fantasy John Brown type or something of the sort. That's all that's ever demonstrated. Like, uh, 
white people that I mean they are really skillful in in making it seem and giving that idea the the impression that if there's going to be some saving involved it's going to be white people like regardless of the circumstance the white people will be the ones who save the day like uh it's inception hurricane katrina like uh they're always going to make sure that that that's the image a white person as the savior just think about all the commercials that come on, like for Feed the Children and things for Haiti. You always see a white person hosting that. You always see white people bringing in the food. You see white people bringing in aid and medicine. So even in the nonprofit ads, it's always white people to the rescue in those as well. Um, I, I, I go to this West Indian restaurant. I picked up this newspaper called the Caribbean Star, and it had a... Uh, the cover of it was saying, "Where are all, it was something like, where are all the prominent black folks? Why aren't they coming to help Haiti?" And it named it named uh, Jay Z, Oprah, uh, Lou because it just named a bunch of like uh, black entertainers, right? And um, on the cover, it showed a white guy. It didn't even show his face; it just showed his back. And he was holding uh, a, 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 a young black child, and you know you could see the child's face over his shoulder. And I said, "Whoa!" And then right under it, it said, "Where are all the prominent, uh, you know, the prominent black folks? You know, why aren't they coming to the aid of of of, of, of Haiti?" But. I got the same newspaper maybe about two months ago before the cholera epidemic broke out, and it said that cholera is not something that is native to Haiti. They think it was brought over there by the first aid workers that were imported over there. I actually heard a radio program that said it was a confirmed fact that the Nepalese UN uh, troops brought yeah, it over. Yeah, Nepal. It was That's confirmed. where they came from, Nepal. Exactly. They said it, it, it's been confirmed. It was a white man on the radio that was down there. He said it has been confirmed, but they're not announcing it on um, the national news things. But think about it. White Club John announced that he was he was wanting to run for the president of Haiti, but then they this was on CNN, I believe. They went to uh, Sean Penn, who I think he's still down there. He was at the time, but even he was saying. Um, since the whole thing that's been going on in Haiti, I'm just wondering why Wyclef Jean has never come down here yet. Like, how do you run for president, but you haven't even come down here to uh, visit or be involved in doing anything? I'm not sure. I, I think at one point he did go down there after he announced he was running for president, but I, I didn't hear anything about him or any other notable black people being down there before that. Was it, wasn't wasn't Stanton also uh, down there in Louisiana during Hurricane Katrina with a boat supposedly saving black folks or something? Yes, sir. He got in the uh, Spike Lee's documentary uh, when the levees broke too, talking about his his harrowing experience. White people have made that an industry uh, with video these days. I mean, showing them, uh, you know, uh, roughing it with with the non-white people. They got a whole bunch of uh, videos of them trying to cross the so-called border with non-white people. You know, white people trying to, you know, see what the what the what the experience is like or whatever. Um, but I could be wrong. But I think with Haiti and with Hurricane Katrina, white people were working overtime to keep uh, people who wanted to come and assist, uh, who wanted to come and help. You know, the black people out. Um, so you know, I mean. I could be, I mean, you know, it could be some black people who want to try to go down there and provide assistance uh, where you got white people saying, no, we're supposed to be saving the day. Nobody else, you know. Wasn't Cuba offering assistance and even some uh, so-called Arab countries and the government turned it down? I think that did happen. I think that did happen. Yep. Uh, White people were trying to help and white folks said, uh, nope, nope. I think uh, another, uh, I think, West African country that it was also colonized by the French Senegal or something like that was trying to uh, mm-hmm. provide some refuge or something like that. 
Yep, they opened their gates to uh, those in Haiti and said, if you want to come here, you're welcome to. Because they both speak, well, the Haitians speak Creole, some speak French, but uh, yes, yeah, Senegal is a French-speaking country as well. How would the Haitians get to Senegal? I'm not uh, exactly you, sure what they have proposed. Yeah, I've I think we're offering them land. In Senegal. I was just saying, I've seen a short clip on Senegal and what uh, what white folks are doing <laughs> to black folks there is, whoa. Whoa. Isn't, doesn't the president of Senegal have a white wife? I'm not sure. The, the female caller from uh, Zimbabwe, what were you saying earlier? Oh, I was just saying that it's one thing to offer people land, but then not offer them the means to to get to the land, you know. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure if they had, uh, had anything set up. I just heard the announcement that they were offering it. But, again, this is through CNN. So if there was something set up, they may not have gone into it fully. But I, I did feel like even though that may be good in the meantime, I don't think they should in mass leave that land because it is theirs. And as soon as they leave it, white people would be poaching upon it to take it and take over the resources and control it. Yep, I, I haven't heard too many uh, black people talking about organizing any types of groups or, or or relief missions or anything to go down there and assist and help. Um, I haven't. I don't know. I I I know uh, they collected. I don't know. Maybe I don't know how much money they collected, but. They collected a significant amount of money, and um, I know they just put up a Zaxby's in less than 30 days from <laughs> from beginning <laughs> to full construction in about 30 to 45 days up the street from my house, and I said to myself, whoa, if you can build a Zaxby's in 45 days, you probably could have rebuilt the whole Haiti by now, Louisiana as well. I mean, uh, 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 New Orleans as well. What I hear white people saying a lot is something about Haiti's uh, government getting in the way or the non-governmental organizations complaining about the Haitian government and the Haitian government not allowing them to do things, and then the Haitian government complaining that these non-governmental organizations have zero respect for the Haitian government and act as if they, as if they should be running things and if they know what's best. So it seems like the non-white Haitian government is encountering racist white supremacists who don't even rule the country but, you know, feel as if they have a right to rule and make decisions without consulting the government, the non-white government of Haiti. So I think that's where a lot of things um, have been stalled to as far as getting things done is is the lack of respect for the government and, you know, kind of a, a standoff in that way. And then the Red Cross, I would never count on them to distribute money to non-white people. They just don't have the greatest reputation for doing that. And I think the Red Cross is a Rothschild-controlled organization. Does anybody have a, an idea of the the, the, the the figure amount that they supposedly have collected, Faye? I don't recall, but I know at one point they had said they had only received 2% of all money pledged from different nations toward Haiti's relief. And I don't think they had gotten the money from the United States yet. Because I thought, I thought I heard something like, like I don't, I don't know, some ridiculous amount, like... It seems like could have really rebuilt, 
you know. Yeah, it, it just gets depressing for me to hear things about what's going on in Haiti because it just seems like it's getting worse and worse. And honestly, it does seem like some sort of genocide or something. Yeah. Yeah, seems so. Like they, they, they still haven't even cleaned all the bodies up. This is almost a year later. Ooh. They haven't come into Haiti and gotten and gotten the wreckage up in all those bodies. There's still people under those buildings. They haven't cleaned that up yet. They do not have the will. Um, who doesn't have the will? White people. I, I would agree with that. They definitely have the ability to do it. Maybe they just don't want to. Maybe they enjoy it and plan on doing this forever. I have seen white people comment online that they they celebrate the fact that so many black people in Haiti are dying and they wish that more of them would die. And they say white people shouldn't help them and let them sit in that S-hole because the minute that they... uh, do anything, that the black people will ruin it, and it'll just revert to the same thing, how Africa is, et cetera, et cetera. So I've definitely seen white people rejoicing and and making light and making fun of what was going on down there. And honestly, to hear that and see what was going on, that did personally hurt me a lot. Yeah, me as well. Because to be a black uh, person and to watch on the news people in a place you haven't been to but you know are connected to you because they were brought from the same places your ancestors were brought from, to see other black people suffering like that, dying by the thousands, and to feel helpless and powerless, and then to see white people rejoicing in it, that that was a pretty heavy blow. I feel like that's what that's what white supremacy means. I mean, whether we whether whether white people decide by choice to show us on TV them scooping up black dead bodies with dump trucks and whatnot else, or they decide to not even put it on TV, it's happening twenty four seven. You know, that's 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 what they plan to do. That's what they're going to continue to do. Um, it's got to be expected. I'm going to tell you something crazy I heard, and uh, my wife, she can confirm this. It was actually her friend. Uh, She's Haitian, and she said that uh, the reason that the earthquake hit Haiti was because of all the evil spirits and the voodoo. (laughs) It sounded sickening, but she's she's Haitian, and that's what she said, uh, uh, something to that effect, because of all the... uh, Something like it was bad karma because of the voodoo and the, you know, uh, man, it was sick. But see, by that logic, America should have been floored a long time ago. Well, what are you telling? Washington, D.C. should have been a hole in the ground if we were to follow that logic. Is she a Christian? Oh, of course. Okay. So, yeah, it, it sounds like a repeat of something. Not even a Christian. She's, a ca- she's Catholic. She's Catholic. Ah, uh, yeah, I met a Catholic Haitian, and uh, it was it was pretty sad. Uh, I was actually going to a business event with a white man who's married to a Haitian female, and his sister-in-law was in the car with us. And uh, the subject came up of the pedophiles in the Catholic Church and why the Pope didn't do anything or correct them. You would have thought the Pope was Jesus the way she was defending him. She got kind of feisty with me, too. I had to chuckle, but I couldn't believe she was defending the Pope. Because she said, no, they're trying to give the church a bad name and the Pope a bad name. And he did what he thought was right. And she was getting really passionate about it. Yeah. I actually uh, uh, spent the last Thanksgiving with uh, with uh, with some Haitian people. 
and um, my girl's stepmother, my wife's stepmother is Haitian, and, and her her sister is married to a, well, she's not married to a white guy, but she's uh, in a relationship with the white guy. And um, you know, when when they were explaining the relationship, she said he's not white, he's Polish. <laughs> I found that to be quite uh, amusing. But I met him, and trust me, he's he's very white. Forcing you to lie to yourself. I mean, <sighs> that's... Uh, oh, my, Tater Pot, she has a, a great uh, new post. Uh, I think it's on my Facebook page. For, or the show Facebook page, excuse me, or both of them, actually. Um, you can go to my Facebook page or the show Facebook page, but she has a uh, brand new post. Uh, it's titled, uh, Sex Isn't That Serious. Getting serious about racism, white supremacy, means getting serious about, I believe it's sex, but it's called, I believe it's sex. And, uh, yeah, it's excellent, uh, excellent essay links material about uh, the incorrectness of having sex with a white person. Yeah. How are we all of the rest of the children that are on the line, um, I would suggest to uh, make a blog of your thoughts and um, uh, w um, what you think about racism, white supremacy, like I did. Um, a one A actually encouraged me to uh, make a blog, and uh, I had to think of, of it some time, but um, I, I've made one. And and my blog address is just do justice today dot blogspot dot com. Again, just do justice today dot blogspot dot com. Yeah, and uh, you should uh, really get that blog up. Email address. Oh right, justice dot asap at yahoo dot com. Again, justice dot asap at yahoo dot com. Context of white supremacy. Again, we'll be back tomorrow, Saturday, December 25th. Uh, Jeremiah Kamara, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, and immediately following the roundtable on Zeitgeist. Uh, should be hopefully constructive, interesting, and uh, yeah, you can sit around with the whole family, eat the food, all the other stuff, and uh, Listen to how Christianity has been used to retard black people. Um, yeah, we have uh, about eight minutes left. Uh, anything, if you all want to share, questions, comments. Children were outstanding. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Brilliant. Uh, I'm super proud of all of you, uh, Mr. Darian, uh, Miss Jewel, uh, Mr. J, uh, Justice, as always. Um, yeah. I think it went well. I'll have to hear. Uh, not on not, he, he thought, I think it seemed like he had some reservations, so I have to see uh, what he thought of the broadcast. But anybody else, if you have anything to share, feel free. Replace white supremacy with justice. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for the children being on today, and uh, I hope we can do this uh, again with more children um, uh, to make them more informed and um, the more <clears throat> normal people that we get informed, I bet the system of racism, white supremacy will be eliminated. The more knowledge people it is, the better we can stop white supremacy.
I just want to thank you all for being on the show. I learned a lot from you all. You welcome. Back and code. Uh, I think there were a total of one, two, three. Well, Justice and three other children. Uh, Tater Pie was inquiring. Justice and three other children. I just want to say to Gus, I I, I will be uh, shooting you a little message on Facebook just to reveal my identity to show you who I am. I think I had uh, kind of figured out uh, who 818 sent her a friend request, but uh, I'll also uh, reveal my identity to show you guys uh, exactly who I am so you can uh, get familiar with me. I plan on you know, contributing when I can to the show. Oh, right on, right on. The face. Oh, yeah, I hit the Facebook page, too. Um, I think it's linked. It is. It's linked on the show page for the cows. Uh, it'll. It's just, it has the uh, symbol for Facebook. Click it, and you'll see the Facebook page for the cows. Um, people post... Uh, Relative information about white supremacy, uh, guest ideas, all that good stuff. So join the Facebook group. Um, yeah, we put information there. I do too. I make posts there too. Okay. Anybody celebrating tomorrow? Be honest. Anybody celebrating tomorrow? Not here. Celebrating what? Christmas. No. Me either. Me either. I have enjoyed the eggnog, but no celebrating. Speaking of eggnog, I do not like eggnog. It has raw eggs in it. It has lots of different uh, stuff that I don't exactly like, such as raw eggs. I used to like it as a child. I will not be having that. (laughs) Yeah, I'm with you, Justice. I used to like it when I was younger, but I kind of grew out of it. Goodbye and have a good night. You too. Uh Uh-huh. That's good.